Your Eminence Cardinal Whirl, Your Eminences, Your Excellencies, dear brother priests, dear brothers, sisters in Christ, what a joy it is to be with you this morning. My name is Father Conrad Murphy. I'm the parochial vicar at Holy Redeemer in College Park, Maryland. And uh, it's a real joy to be with you. It's an incredible joy. What an awesome morning. <laughs> And I use that word joyful very deliberately, very deliberately, because though we're here under ostensibly sad circumstances to protest the tragedy that is abortion, we're here to do so much more. We're here to build a culture of life. We're here to build a culture which St. John Paul II says, of respect for life, for every human being, from the first moment of conception, until its natural end. And this is a joyful thing. It's a joyful thing to be doing. We gather here to proclaim the incredible truth that each one of us from the smallest infant in the womb to the oldest in our communities is created by God in his own image and likeness. And because of that, we matter. We have dignity. How good is that? It's amazing what an incredible truth we profess. And so it's good that we're joyful today. We don't have to have grimaces on our faces as we protest. We protest with joy and smiles. Now, building a culture of life isn't easy. It's easy when you're in a stadium with you know, 10,000 of your closest friends, all of you joyful proclaiming the gospel of life. It's easy when you're excited and we are pumped up by great music and you're a little punchy from maybe not getting enough sleep then it's easy to proclaim the gospel of life. It gets a little harder when we go back home. We go through our normal day-to-day -day lives. And then fear can enter in. And there are two fears in particular that can stop us from proclaiming the gospel of life. They're the fears we heard in the readings today. We have the fear of the rich young man that we heard in the gospel, and the fear of Jeremiah from the first reading. Now that first fear, the fear of the rich young man, is something I'm sure we've all experienced. It's the fear that if I accept Jesus' word, if I really practice my faith, then I'll lose out on life. The rich young man wants to follow Jesus. He wants to be holy. But he's afraid that if he really does that and gives up all his belongings, then he'll not be happy. He'll be sad. And we have this fear in our lives all the time. Fear that if I say yes to Jesus, then he'll take everything fun in my life away from me. Fear that if I stand for the dignity of all human life, I will be made fun of and ridiculed and shunned. Fear that being a saint means years of misery that maybe might get me into heaven one day. I remember this fear when I was first driving up to seminary, my first year in seminary. I was thinking, what if this is some sort of cruel joke? What if, what if God is, is messing with me? What if he's going to make me miserable the rest of my life? Even the saints had this fear. St. Augustine describes the moment of his conversion. When he wants to follow Christ, he wants to give everything, but his sins won't let him go. They say, you know, they tugged at my garment of my flesh and whispered, are you getting rid of us? And from this moment, we shall never be with you again, not forever and ever. And so he says, I hesitated to detach myself to be rid of them, to make the leap to where I was being called. That's fear. It's the same fear as the rich young man. Brothers and sisters, this fear is a lie. This fear is a lie. What happens in the gospel? The rich young man, he goes away sad. He chooses happiness, he chooses his possessions, he chooses the world, and he goes away sad. The world can't bring us happiness. Only Jesus Christ can bring us happiness. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed, St. Paul tells us. The will of God is good, pleasing, and perfect. When we are truly answering Jesus' call, when we're saying yes to him, we're, be, we're being transformed by his grace. When we say yes to the friendship that he offers us, that's where we find true happiness. That's where we find joy then we can proclaim the gospel of life with freedom and interior peace. 
true lasting happiness, it only comes from a deep, intimate friendship with Jesus Christ. So there's no need for us to be afraid. There's no need for us to be afraid. We have such an incredible friend in our Lord. Now the second fear that we face is the fear of Jeremiah. What does he say in the first reading? Our Lord comes to him and he responds, Ah, Lord God, he says, I know not how to speak. I am too young. And we too experience this fear. We say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. Yes, Lord, I want to change the world. I want to be holy. I want to be a saint. I want to build a culture of life. But I'm not on the Supreme Court. I don't write laws. I don't have a million followers on Instagram. So what can I do? It's just little me. I can't change anything. But again, brothers and sisters, this fear is a lie. What is it that changes the world? It's not power, it's holiness. Holiness changes the world. The Lord's response to Jeremiah is, see, I place my words in your mouth. He doesn't say, see, I make you a king, or see, I put you on the Supreme Court, or see, I give you a huge social media following. That's not what he says. He says, see, I place my words in your mouth. When we are living in an intimate relationship with our God, when we receive the Eucharist and have his word in our mouths, when we allow ourselves to be in love with Jesus Christ, when we are striving to be holy, that's when the world starts to change. You have no idea how much God can work through little you, through little you, how much God can change this world. Your personal holiness will save lives and change lives. I want to share with you, you know, in this fear, one of my favorite saint stories. It's about a, a monk. I went to a high school run by Benedictine monks called Bennett Academy in Illinois. And I confess that was a shameless shout out. <laughs> anyway, this story is about uh, St. Bernard of Clairvaux. He wasn't a Benedictine, he was a uh, Cistercian. And St. Bernard, when he was around your age, he was only about 17 years old, he had a big moment of conversion. And he realized that he wanted to follow Jesus Christ with his whole heart and his whole life. And he wanted to give everything to the Lord and enter a monastery and live solely for Jesus Christ. But he thought to himself, this is going to be such a good life. This is going to be such an amazing way to live. I don't want to just keep it for myself. I want to tell everyone I know. So he went to his friends and his family members, to his brothers and his uncles and his, even his parents, and he said, come with me to the monastery. And he brought 25 of his family members with him to the monastery. That's an incredible love of Jesus Christ. That's a joy that's infectious. That's a holiness that has power. And the story is that as St. Bernard would walk from town to town, Women would hide both their sons and their husbands lest they be so attracted to his life of holiness that they run off and join the monastery. That's real joy, brothers and sisters. That's the holiness that Jesus Christ has set out for each and every one of us. You are called to that life of holiness. You are called to that life of joy. And your joy, your love of our Lord will change the world. You don't need to be on the Supreme Court. You need to have the love of God burning in your hearts. The joy the Lord gives you will speak eloquently to all those you meet about the goodness of the Lord and the dignity of all human life. Pope Francis writes to us, we need witnesses to hope and true joy if we're to dispel the illusions that promise quick and easy happiness through artificial paradises. The profound sense of emptiness felt by so many people can be overcome by the hope we bear in our hearts and the joy that it gives. We need to acknowledge the joy that rises up in a heart touched by mercy. Let us keep in mind then the words of the apostle, rejoice in the Lord always. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord is calling to you today. He is calling to you, to each and every one of you, just as he called to Jeremiah, just as he called to the rich young man. He is calling to you to help proclaim the dignity of all human life 
by living a life of joy and holiness. Fears will come, but we should not listen to them. We should listen instead to the words of our Lord, be not afraid. Only in Jesus Christ do we find truth. Only in Jesus Christ do we find true peace. Only in Jesus Christ do we find the love that our heart so ardently desires. And only in Jesus Christ do we find true joy. And that joy, your joy, brothers and sisters, will change the world. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever.